All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 365 of the First Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and today we are going to be talking about Georgia Southern football. If you're new here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football, but today it's going to be all attention on Georgia Southern football. We're going to talk about a few guys that stand out. We're going to talk about a few guys that could make a difference, and uh, we're going to talk about everything under that umbrella. Uh, welcome to the first and frame race channel welcome to the show once again if this is your first time here i am vf baller and uh, all the links are down in the description if you want to support in any way i'm also on uh, youtube and rumble i'm also on uh anchor stitcher spotify apple Podcasts, and google Podcasts. so uh let's go ahead and get into this georgia southern baseball just finished they hosted a regional unfortunately they didn't get to the super regional and uh but there's nothing to hang your head hat on you know um it, it's not it's nothing to hang your head uh, your, your head on it, it, it was a pretty good season you know 40 wins uh, you know you host the regional you, you did what you had to do for the most part unfortunately we didn't go any further but that's okay now since baseball season is over it is time to talk about some georgia southern football um, yes, it's, I know it's early June. The first game is not going to be, what, in early September? But throughout this entire summer, we could talk about and analyze and break down what this team is capable of, any newcomers that are going to come onto the team because, uh, you know, recruiting don't stop. So we're going to talk about those things when they come about. Also, we're going to talk about the development of players, you know, any news that come across the wire about this team, of who uh, who's doing what or whatever the case may be. And, uh, we're just going to continue to march closer and closer to when it gets to the real practices and when it comes to the first game against Morgan State. So uh, let, let, let's go ahead and get into this. The Georgia Southern Eagles have revamped. I mean, if you haven't been paying attention, uh, I'm going to give you a quick refresher. The coach uh, was uh, let go in the middle of the season last year, and the interim coach came in, and we ended up having a 3-9 and nine season. Um, with that being said, Throughout the middle of the season, we hired another coach at the same time, Coach Clay Helton from the University of South, S Southern California, I'm about to say South Carolina. He came in and he has been evaluating the team ever since. And once the season was over, he ended up, you know, taking the reins. And he's done a pretty good job so far when it comes to actual uh, recruiting, bringing people in as far as staff, strength and conditioning transfers guys are moving in different positions and we kind of saw a little bit of it we got a little bit of taste of it at the spring game um the spring game was pretty you know electric as far as you know i'm concerned uh saw some passes saw some really good chris you know throws some really good looking touchdowns defense played okay but mostly the spring game is pretty much catered to you know what the offense can do and but it gave us a lot of hope on based on you know what you know the team is going to look like now it's not going to be a run first team but we can run the ball and uh it's going to be really interesting to see a balance for the first time that that's actually going to be efficient and, i mean this is not the first time it's happened we've seen somewhat of more of a passing concept in, within georgia southern football in years past but now this is going to be a situation where we're going to see a lot of passing, a lot of passing. It's going to be really cool to see that this team is going to be uh, quite different. It's going to surprise a lot of people. But with that being said, I got four guys up here, and, and this is not in no particular order, and I know I left some guys out because there's a lot of talent on this team. But these four guys, I feel like they're going to have a breakout year, and uh, we're going to, throughout you know this the rest of this offseason, we're going to look at other players that, you know, quite frankly, could have an impact, offense and defense. Now, these four guys are on offense, and um, we're going to start there. And it all starts with the guy that has transferred from the University of Buffalo. He's here at Georgia Southern. Coach Clay Helton did a phenomenal job bringing this kid down. And not only that, he has some other quarterbacks as well that's going to look pretty good. But Cal Van Treese, the uh, sixth, seventh year, I can't remember which one, but he's a you know a graduate that is transferring down to Georgia Southern that's actually going to be playing at, at pretty much starting quarterback. He looks very good, looks pretty crisp, and I think he's going to have a breakout year because we have a lot of weapons. The guy can move around. He can actually can you throw the ball pretty well. And when you saw him in the uh, spring game, it, it, he just took command not only of 
the offense, but everybody around him that was, you know, on the team pretty much, you know, galvanized around him. Kind of remind me somewhat of a Cam Ransom that when he first started, but, you know, only he's no longer with the team. He's, he, he's in a transfer portal. But Kyle Van Trees commands that same type of, uh, uh, you know, leadership or that same type of vibe that other team players want to be around him and want to succeed. And with bringing him in with all the experience that he has, it's going to be really, really good to see not only just for this season, but for years to come when you have other quarterbacks that are under him that are actually going to be, uh, you know, learning and watching and actually taking some of their talents and infusing all of that information in their system or the way that they play as well. So this is a really big deal. At first, I wasn't really on board with, okay, we're getting a transfer in from another school with a new coach. I know he wants somewhat of his, it's somewhat of his guy, but I was more like, okay, I think we can do good with other players, that other quarterbacks we have now, but I kind of see the vision now. I see what he's doing. And with that being said, I'm on board. I think Van Trees is going to have a pretty good, you know, season. And it all starts with the other guys that he got around. We have a lot of receivers. And before I get into the first receiver that I'm talking about, I want to mention the Derwin Burgess, the Amari Coopers, um, the other guys that that are that are here that has been um bought in as uh you know recruits in transfers. Those guys look really good. But I watched Jeremy Singleton play in the spring game. And with him being another transfer that has a lot of uh a lot of experience at the University of Houston. It looks like these two guys could hook up and be really special together. Uh, Jer you know, Jeremy Singleton looked really fast on the field, and he had some hands, and he was able to uh, score a touchdown. I think it was a touchdown. They say it wasn't, but um, if you look at the screen, if you're watching the screen right here, it looks like a touchdown that, was, that wasn't called. Um, I, I can't remember. I think it wasn't called. But nevertheless, he is going to be very productive in his offense. And with the vision of the quarterback, with you know, with Kyle Van Trees, you can see these guys linking up a lot. You know, with all the experience that he has and, you know, the way that he runs routes and he, has, and he can catch the ball, this is something that we need if we're going to transition over from a run-first option style, spread option style team to a air raid style passing game with the, with the running game as well. You're going to need guys like this to get open, especially when the running game is on point and we can play action out of that and make something happen. Um, with that being said, that's one of the plays that will happen with um in the spring game. And with Sam Kinnerson, Sam Kinnerson, I'm, I'm going to tell you something about this kid. I like when k kids are able to be successful at being a football player, not just uh, I'm good at a position, but being good at, at being, you know, a football player. Sam Kennison came in as an athlete, was going to be a quarterback here at Georgia Southern, played a little bit of quarterback um, last season, um, very fast, saw him move the ball pretty well, win times he had open space. But unfortunately, with the whole turmoil and everything that changed this whole team and basically flipped it to another dimension, Sam Kennison didn't have a spot on the quarterback, you know, right, um, depth chart as far as I saw. But what Sam Kennison did was move over to receiver and it paid off dividends. I, what I saw in the spring game was like, okay, this is not a kid that's just moving over just to fill a roster spot. He's not moving over just because, you know, uh, Sam Kennison moving over because he can actually play some ball. A phenomenal touchdown catch in the spring game, very fast, was able to get open a few times within, you know, the defense. And I know, like I said, the spring game, it's to show the offense how well the offense could play. But don't get me wrong, the way that he was moving around that field, showing that he was ready to go, and he was more than capable of being a re receiver. So kudos to Sam Kennison. This is between him and Jalen White, which I will get into shortly. These two guys are probably my breakout guys coming into the next season. I'm going to do more of a spotlight on those guys down the road, so be on the lookout for that. But I think Sam Kennison with the transition over from quarterback to receiver, I think he's going to be, you know, the biggest breakout of for Georgia Southern. Now, there's other guys on the team. Like I said, you got Jeremy Singer, you got Durham Burge, you got Amari Jones, you got some J.J. McAfee, you got some good receivers on this team. But I think putting, you know, Sam Kennison in a slot, putting him in a slot 
is going to pay off dividends. It, it really is. I feel that this is going to be a situation where he's going to be very valuable and he's going to be a nightmare, you know, match a matchup nightmare for a lot of guys in the Sun Belt. You know, I talked about the uh, the game against uh, Nebraska, which I don't want to get too far into. They have one. They have, they have a pretty they have okay secondary. They got one guy that came from Ohio State looking pretty good. And I don't want to look too far ahead, but I feel like that's going to be the test of what this team is going to be able to do for the entire season. Because Nebraska is, is clearly the big dog out of all of the teams that we have on the schedule. And there's no disrespect to the, the, the Sun Belt or whatever, but Nebraska is Nebraska, even though they're, you know, a little bit lower. I, I don't want to go down that. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I talked about them a little bit yesterday on the show, but um, I just want to let you guys know, I think that Sam Kennison and Jeremy Singleton, two breakout guys for next season. But I think that Sam Kennison is going to have a I, – I, he, he's capable capable for a monster season. I think he's he's one of these guys that could probably get 600, maybe 700 yards receiving. And, and, and I'm not joking when I say that. With the way they're throwing the ball now, I would not be surprised if he can get anywhere above 500 minimum. But I don't want to go too far on that. That's just my thoughts and opinions on that. But last but not least – Jalen White, I was on this kid from day one. He was one of those kids that I followed ever since the Cam Ransoms, the Sean Pell Kissins, which I, I miss those guys dearly already. And they're and, and they're they're gone. Jalen White is one of those kids that I saw when he came from Alabama. I think it was Dalesville, Alabama. Came to Georgia Southern when he had other offers elsewhere. One of the leading rushers in the country decided to come to Georgia Southern, paid his dues, showed off what he could do in his uh, freshman year a little bit, really shined a little bit his sophomore year, but now he's a junior. And, man, let me tell you something right now. Um, this kid could be a problem, especially if this offensive line can do what they do. This kid could be a problem. We all talk about the passing game and what the passing game can do. We got a new quarterback and all this other stuff. I think Jalen White could be the next big thing when it comes to running the football for Georgia Southern. And that's a tall task because we're not going to run the ball that much. We're not going to run the ball as much as we did in the past. But to have that balance where you don't have to worry about running the ball so much, this kid can have fresh legs in the fourth quarter and nobody would want to tackle this kid. Six foot, 220. I mean, and he can run. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to run a hype. I'm not trying to start a hype train here, but I've seen this kid work. I've seen this kid run the ball, not only, you know, throughout last season, but also in the spring game where it looks like he has gotten, you know, bigger, faster, and stronger. You know, so when you look at a kid like Jalen White, who's paid his dues, know what this team is capable of, knowing what the Sun Belt looks like because he's seen them two years already outside of the newcomers, Jane Madison, Old Dominion, and, and, you know, Marshall and all, you know, outside of those guys, he knows what it takes to play in the Sun Belt. And all we need is we need to see what this offensive line is going to do. And we got some hogs that, that was recruited. They may be a little young, but trust me, if these guys can move some guys around a little bit, just move some guys around. This kid's gonna be tough to tackle in a second in in, in in at the second level. I've seen him, you know, I've seen how hard he is to tackle at the second level. So outside of Kennerson and no to take nothing away from Gerald Green and JD King and everybody else who was here, I, I, I love our running our running back, you know, um, you know, position uh, players. In that you know that depth chart of running backs, we have probably some of the talented, run, most talented running backs in the Sun Belt, if not, if not in the Southeast. And I'm not joking when I say that. And you got a court, a running backs coach that's come here from Tennessee that's going to show these guys how to you know be you know good quality running backs. Look, I, I'm telling you right now, I said Cam, Sam Kennison is probably going to have the breakout season. That's far as running, I mean, cars receivers. I'm not going to say this, you know, definitively, but I would love to see. I'm not going to say this is going to happen definitively, but I would love to see Jalen White get over 1,000 yards. I would love to see it. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I would love to see it. Because a kid like this with the stature and the way that he can run the ball and having these, these teams off balance, because they're going to be worrying about all these four or five, you know, these four or five receivers that could be, you know, um efficient at any time and a quarterback excuse me and a quarterback that can sling the ball and throw the ball over the field at any time 
This is one kid that they, they this is one kid they're probably not gonna be able to account for. And with the one two punch of him and Gerald Green and all the other running backs that's probably gonna be there that's gonna be putting in work, it, it's gonna be a nightmare for a lot of teams. It's gonna be a nightmare to 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 try to figure this team out. It was so easy to figure out Georgia Southern back in the day, when, or last year, for instance, when you know that the run was coming. It was phenomenal to see that they knew it was coming and they couldn't stop it. But you know it was coming, and it was easy for the people to, you know, game plan for that. Now it's not going to be so easy. And I think Jalen White is going to be one of those guys that could definitely break out. Now, there's other guys that are here. I think Tyler Jordan, you know, like I said, you got uh, Gerald Green, J.D. King. You got some You got some guys that can run the ball. You know, I'm not taking nothing away from J.D. J.D. King can run the ball. Gerald Green is fast. But you have a guy with 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 uh, Jalen White has a balance of both. And, 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 and Lord knows, I've seen him. The, the kid has some strength to him. He's not going to go down very easy, so... When you look at these four guys right here, before I close, I'm saying when you have these four guys right here that are willing and able to, you know, be efficient at their position, guys that can go out and, you know, help you win football games, guys who have experience, like, you know, basically three out of the four. And, and you can say Sam Kennison, all four of these guys have some form of experience of playing football at this level. It, it's going to be a problem for a lot of teams, and I can't wait to see how it happens. I think this is going to be a, a a team that's a lot better than advertised. I don't think this is going to be somewhat like a three and nine season or anything like that. You know, I think that I I said it before. I think the team can win eight eight games. I think this team can win eight games, and I'm not joking when I say that. Eight games minimum. I I don't have a problem with being wrong with that, but I have high expectations when you make all these moves and bring all these coaching changes in. You run the offense that you're running and it looks as efficient as it, do, as it does. You bring this talent in. You got transfers coming in. I think this is going to be a big turnaround. It, it's happened before. We went 2-10 and 10 and turned around and went 10-3 and three with the team. And I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to say nothing bad about the 2018 team because I love that team. This team could possibly be way more talented than that team. It's not far fetched to say that this team is not is talented than the two and two the the the, the ten and three team that we had in twenty eighteen. So with that being said, we have a really good chance to do something really nice here, if not this year, but definitely next year. The next three years at least could be something really special. I don't know what Coach Clay Helton and his uh, aspirations are with this team. Is this a stopgap for him to get back in the Power Five? I don't know. You know, but I think he's starting to, you know, he's putting people in place where they can come right behind him and be successful because you got a coaching staff here that has a lot going on with a lot of talent that could take that le take that step and say, hey, I want to be a head coach. And they can go right behind Coach Elton and do that. But, you know, that's years down the road. I don't want to talk about that too much. But when you look at what's going on here, this is not your run of the mill. Let's put a coach in and, and try to win some games. This is this is a, a program changing situation, literally. And this is a program changer because the, the team has changed. The philosophy of change. Having the wants haven't changed. This team still has the bad case of the wants. But it just looked different now. And I think this is something that we're going to uh, really be having fun with throughout this process. I can't wait to see how it plays out. This is going to be really fun to see. If, if you like this content, hit the like button. Share this podcast. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Georgia Southern, man, it's all about Georgia Southern football. The baseball you know, season is over. We have football on the horizon. And right now, we got some guys on this team, and it's not just up to these four guys that I talked about. I can name off almost about four more people on the offense and about seven guys on defense that are ready to go. I, I just can't wait to see how all this plays out. Not, we're not even talking about the recruits that haven't made it to campus yet. So it, this is going to be really fun to see coming this upcoming September. September 3rd is the first game. I advise you guys to watch it because I mean, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a team 
that is on the way up, not down. And, you know, I can't wait to, you know, express my feelings and analyze all of that. All right, y'all. If all the links are down in the description, if you want to uh, support in any way possible. And once again, I am on all the podcast avenues and I'm on YouTube and Rumble. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Have a good one because, you know, it's it's a pretty fun time right now. You know, enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you guys on Thursday. And you guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.